Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we are reviewing the Milad DX300 Max. Now the cool thing about this bike, it is a dual battery, dual motor, full suspension, moped style bike. We got a lot to go over, so let's get into it. I have to tell you guys, I really dig the look of this bike, especially this raked out back end, and it just makes the bike feel longer and more aggressive. I don't know. I see my breath. I don't know if you guys can see it on the film. It's about 33 degrees here in Chicago, but at least it's not in those sub-zero temperatures that I'm used to having for the past month. The DX300 Max is a Class 3 e-bike. It gets shipped to you as a Class 3. It has five levels of pedal assist. It does have a cane sensor down here, and you have a half-twist throttle. I'm a little confused on the weight of this bike because they say that it weighs 136 pounds. It says that on the website, but when it was shipped to me, it said the box weighed 136 pounds. So when you take out the packing material, well, this bike is gonna weigh a little bit less than that. I'm guessing this bike weighs about 118 to 120 pounds overall the way it is because I've reviewed enough bikes that I understand how much packing weight material weighs and I just kind of evened it and figured it out. I don't have scales to, we to, to measure this thing out with. Now what's interesting about this bike is that this frame is a steel frame. And because of that, this bike holds up to 450 pounds. Most of the other bikes we've seen are aluminum, but this frame is very basic. It's steel, which makes it super strong. Since this is a double battery bike, Milad says that the DX300 Max will go up to 150 miles on a single charge. This bike only comes in one size, and that means your average rider height is gonna be between 5'3 and 6'2. It also only comes in one color, and that is this matte black right here. The Milad DX300 Max normally costs $21.99 on the website, but I checked it, and right now, during the filming of this video, it is on sale for $1,599. The rear motor is a 750 watt geared hub motor. It has a peak power of 1200 watts. It also has 85 Newton meters of torque. You have the same motor on the front wheel as well. Together, this bike produces 2400 watts of peak power and 170 Newton meters of torque when put into all wheel mode. You have a Shimano seven speed transmission with a tourney derailleur and a derailleur guard, plus a standard Shimano seven speed thumb shifter. The brakes are branded Milad. They are four piston disc brakes with a 160 millimeter rotor, but this rotor is thicker than other rotors its size. The rear wheel has the same brake setup. The DX300 Max sits on 20 by four inch tires. They're CST Scout tires. They have a street pattern on them and they're puncture resistant. The front fork is a dual crown fork. It has about 127 millimeters of travel. You can lock it out and adjust the preload. But the big thing is this back shock. This rear shock has two features to make sure you get the maximum comfort out of it. You have this spring right here, which is adjustable by just turning this dial up here and you can compress it down. The more you compress it, the stronger it gets. But this right here, this air shock part, that comes empty when you get the bike. So you're gonna wanna air this up. Now, before you go hooking up your, your, your tire pump to it, that's not gonna work. That's not, gonna, that's not what you want. You'll blow up the shock. You have to get yourself a shock pump or take it to your local bike shop. Since I weigh 225 pounds, not only have I tightened down the spring some, but I have put 120 pounds into this air shock. Now, when you combine those two together, well, it's hopefully gonna make the ride pretty comfortable for me. Both batteries on this bike are 48 volt with 20 amp hours each. They both have 960 watt hours of power, meaning that when you have them both turned on, you get 40 amp hours of power and 1920 watt hours. This bike comes with a 4.5 amp charger. And the cool part about it is it has split ends that allows you to charge up both batteries at the same time. You can leave them connected to the bike. It reaches, it hooks into this port right here and this one over here. If you're charging both of these batteries at the same time, it's gonna take approximately nine hours because you're cutting that 4.5 in half. But if you are just charging one battery at a time, well, you're gonna charge it up in about four and a half hours. These batteries will come with separate sets of keys. There'll be two for each. Now, what I always do is I 
take one key from each and I put it on its own keychain and then I hide the other ones away so in case I ever lose these keys, I still have another set. Now it comes off real easy. You're gonna put your key in, you're gonna switch it, pull back, it unhooks, and you can just pull it off to take it inside the home. To put it back on, well, you don't need the key in it, so let's pull that out. Just gonna place it back on the cradle, and we're locked in and good to go. You'll do the same thing with the battery down here. Now, each battery can be turned on and off separately, which means that you don't need to have both batteries going to operate the bike whenever you just turn it off. Well, now you're only operating on 20 amps instead of 40. There's a power button here, and there's one right here. Each battery has a power indicator level. This is for the top battery. If you just push that, it's gonna tell you how much battery power you have using the red and green lights. The second battery indicator is right here and it does the same. Additional features include, we have metal fenders right here. This seat, it's, it's kind of firm. I don't know, I don't know how it is. It's not that wide and it is 13.8 inches in length. It also has BMX style handlebars, alloy pedals, and it does come with a phone app, but that phone app only works for Android users. And if you want to use the navigation to where you can see it on your display, well, that happens to have an additional cost to it. Now let's talk about the sizing of this bike. I am five foot nine. I have a 32 inch inseam. This right here is 33 and a half inches tall where the seating area is, which is the tallest of all the moped style e-bikes that I have ridden. And I like that fact because I don't feel like I'm sitting real low in traffic. These handlebars can also be moved forward and back depending on what your arm length is that'll be most comfortable for you. Cockpit operations. On your left hand side, you're gonna have a grip. Now what I wanna tell you right now is that I added this mirror on here because I wanted to get the pressure right on that back shock. You do have your front brake lever right here and here is your display. Before we can turn the display on, well, we gotta turn either one of the two batteries on. So we're just gonna hit that button right there. And then you're just gonna hold down on your power button and the screen will come up. This is what the display looks like when it's fired up. Let me show you something here real quick. Right here is a USB port. If you wanna go ahead and charge up something while you're, uh, while you're using it. And then right here, as you can see, it shows your which gear you're in. So right now we have it in rear wheel drive. You hit that button again, it turns it into front wheel drive. You hit it one more time and it gives you all wheel drive. You also have your different path levels over here on the left. As you can see, it comes up all the way up to five and then all the way back down. You have your speed in miles per hour. And then this is showing that we have 100% battery power ready. It also gives you your odometer miles, your trip mile, and your average miles per hour. By hitting this real quick, all it's gonna do is switch between the different modes and you can do that while you're riding. If we wanna turn the headlights on, well, we're just gonna hold down the plus button and it turns the headlight on. As you can see that this dimmed, I really like this headlight because that's what the daytime running light looks like. And then if you switch it to the left, well, it turns on the low beam. And if you switch it to the right, it turns on your high beam. And then to turn it back off, well, you're just gonna hold that button. The rear tail light on this bike is a little different. When you have the headlights on, the tail light does show up, but if you hit the brake lever, it doesn't light up. But when you turn the headlights off, whenever you hit the brake lever, it lights up. On the right hand side, you have a hard rubber grip. You have your half twist throttle right here. It comes with a horn, listen to this. And then right here controls for three different light levels. You also have your rear brake lever right here and your thumb shifter which every time you hit this, it puts it up in gear and then you lower the gears by using this. Up gear, lower gear. I disabled the password on this bike. I forgot to tell you that when you start it up, it comes with a passcode that whenever you start the bike up, you can put that passcode in so that you can keep people from stealing the bike. Well, your passcode is gonna be zero, 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 zero. Then once you hit that, then you have your normal display. Now, if you, you can change things, by clicking here, and if you don't want the password, well, you click into there. So we wanna turn off the, the password. You're just gonna hit that button right there, and it's gonna ask you to input your password again. Then when you do that, it's like close password function. So unclose it, turn it back on, and you should not have the passcode. To get into the main menu of the bike, you're gonna hit the plus and minus symbol right here. That's gonna take you into things like display settings, um, to make any adjustments to that, to change it from like kilometers to miles per hour, you're gonna have to hit that 
and you're going to have to put in a passcode and the passcode is not your passcode that you use to start the bike the admin passcode is actually 2020 and you will have to use this passcode each time you want to go in and change something so i right, hear unit let's hit on you have imperial or metric All right so we want imperial then we have trip reset that's when you want to reset the trip mileage on the display this controls the bluetooth signal strength for the phone app and then you can uh, speed on there we go see <laughs> and you can use this little arrow to go up and down but i figure uh 92 miles is pretty good pretty fast it won't do that amount but now you know battery info if you have an error code that takes you back language you have three different languages english german spanish uh themes you can change the color of this theme then we were talking about password bluetooth this is if you have the uh if you have an android phone and you hook it to the app the app is going to ask you to scan a qr code and that's where you're going to find it auto off this is where you set your how many minutes you're going to turn it off and on that the bike turns off on its own wheel size we will need that if it's not reading correctly uh, on the speedometer so we can adjust that and then you go to exit and you're back out and now it's time for my favorite part of the review and that's where i take this bike out and see how it does we are out here on the road test i know this is going to be pretty busy today the uh, 606 trail but i wanted to point out is that i did ask to reset the odometer like it showed in the manual and it didn't reset the mileage on this uh, bike for the uh, for the trip so i went ahead and turned on strava as strava is what I use for all my reviews anyways for tracking distance. Immediately out of the gate, I've noticed that this bike does have a cruise control on it. And if you hold it at a certain speed for uh, any amount of time, it just, it just automatically kicks on. And I looked in there because I saw another review where somebody had that happen. I don't see where you can turn that off. So right now we're just cruising at 14.4 miles an hour. It's kind of a nice feature, but I can also see where it would be annoying. For this review, we are gonna be having both batteries on and we're just gonna be going for distance when it comes to using just the rear wheel drive. Uh, we'll be doing a part where we test out the front wheel drive and see how that feels when we're riding it. But the only time we're gonna use all wheel drive for this part of the review is whenever we're doing the hill climb or if uh, when I run into sand and we ride it in the sand. But besides that, all the other time, we'll be just using the rear wheel motor. Now we just turned it off and we're doing no power pedaling. I mean, there is power going on, but we have it on pedal assist zero, which is not helping us at all. We're gonna kick this down a couple gears. And I can tell you right now that this bike is not any fun to ride without power, which, you know, I knew it was gonna be like that because it's every moped style e-bike that I've ridden is not made to be ridden pedaling it. But at least this way I'll know if, uh, if I misjudge like I have with other bikes that it is possible to pedal at home. It is a beautiful day here in Chicago. The uh, temperature is about 42 degrees, and that brings a lot of uh, Chicagoans out. So we won't be doing any testing on this trail right here. We're gonna wait till we get out to Lakeshore Drive where I have more room, and that way we can get some uh, speed testing done there. We are here to do the hill climb test. Now I do have it just operating off of one battery, which means we've got 20 volts going to it instead of 40. We're doing rear wheel drive. We wanna see how easy it is to be to make it up this hill. I have done the uh, research to see that it is between 16, some parts are 16% grade, the others are 20. So let's go ahead and see how this rear wheel drive does. I moved over here a little bit to the side because uh, the main area was muddy. All right, let's see if we're gonna make it up. Ooh, 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 yeah. So we didn't even make it up with this right now. So we're gonna turn around. That was just a rear wheel drive. We're gonna try it with the uh, front wheel. I have a feeling it's gonna be the same. All right, here we go. Let's give it a shot. Remember, we're operating off of one battery right now. She's making some noise. Oh. <laughs> Oh, she's starting to spin. Okay. As you can see, it's kind of muddy up here. Woo. <laughs> I have it in dual mode now. So let's see how that does. <laughs> oh, we just launched off the gate. Yeah, now we're talking. As I expected it to do. When you put it in all-wheel drive, it's just going to shoot right up the hill. Woo. Once again, that's pretty quick. That is pretty 
be quick. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the secondary battery and give ourselves 40 amps, turn the bike back on. We're gonna move it to the rear wheel. Okay, we're gonna see if that makes any kind of difference. Ready, go. I mean, it does feel like it has more power, but I have a feeling it's gonna do the same. Yeah, so having the single drive going, even though you have 40 amps, is not gonna make any, well, I don't know, guys. Apparently it is going to make a difference because we are gonna make it to the top of this hill, just not very fast. Holy cow, when I put this thing in all wheel drive, we're probably gonna be screaming up this hill. Now we made it up with the rear wheel drive, so let's go ahead and put it into front wheel drive and see how that does. I expect the same, where we're gonna go kind of slow, but we should make it up the hill. It's very spun out before. I'm leaning forward to try to give more weight to the front. Come on, come on, baby, come on. Oh, the front went, the front tire's just spinning. I don't have the weight, but it does seem like it wants to make it up. We have a little bit of mud going on from all of the, uh, the snow and the ice and, Everything that was going on here in Chicago, I have put it in all-wheel drive. We have all 40 amps going. My foot up on the pedal here, and let's go. <laughs> it just launched. Ooh, wow. Okay. So now we know that this thing is a beast when you have both batteries on and both drives going. We are back on the 606 trail so I can head over to Lakeshore Drive. I figured I'd take this route. This is the easiest route to get out there. And you can see the amount of people that we have on this trail today. So it makes total sense on the reason that I'm not using this for a speed test. Now I figured I would go ahead and just check out the speedometer right now and it shows 17 miles an hour on the display at well 16.9 and now it's showing 16 here. So I'm gonna say that the speedometer is accurate. I don't even know if you guys can see it. It's a bright sunny day out here in Chicago. So we should get some pretty good views when it comes to the city landscape. But right now it is looking like the display is correct when it comes to the speedometer and that's a good thing. We have made it out here to the beach. We're gonna do the sand test on this bike. Now, I have to tell you that I did change my mind on how I was gonna review this bike. And what I mean by that is I went ahead and I shut off one of the batteries because you can ride this bike with only one battery on it. So in case you decide not to bring both your batteries and they don't feed off each other unless they're both on, that means that I can run it on one battery at the 20 amps and then see how it does, except for when we're doing stuff like this where we go through the sand we're gonna turn both batteries on. Let me turn that on. And we're gonna put it in all wheel drive because that's how we test it in the sand. So let's go check it out. We are struggling. What is going on? We have both batteries on. It's in all wheel drive. We're moving at three miles an hour, but we are making it through Let's see what's going on here. Maybe the cruise control kicked on or something. There we go. Yeah, I think the cruise control kicked on at three miles an hour. And so now there we go. Now we're picking up speed and we're just cutting through the sand. Uh, I think this might be one of the issues with this cruise control because uh, to make it, you know, stop, uh, to make the cruise control not work, you got to take your hand off the grip and then put it back on. But, yeah, <laughs> but now that we've got her going, I mean, she's just plowing through this sand. That front motor is a lot louder than the rear motor. But yeah, look at this thing. I mean, we're just, I can take it anywhere on the beach. Woo. All right, let's go ahead and put it back into rear wheel drive. We're gonna shut off that second battery and let's continue on with the ride. This bike is solid. I mean, it's not making any noise whenever I'm going off of curbs or whatever. And that is a great thing because I'm not a huge fan of having a lot of noises going. But yeah, so this is the, the Lakeshore Trail.
We are here in Chicago. For those who don't know that I do my uh, reviews here in Chicago. And now we're just going to put some, a uh, little bit of mileage on this bike. I want to try to see what uh, top speed we can get on it right now. We will be taking a look to see if the top speed changes when using both batteries instead of just one. All right, so it looks like with one battery and just using rear wheel drive, I cruise between like 23 to 24 miles an hour. That's been like the average I think I've gone like a half a mile or something with it pulled all the way back. It just keeps moving around the 24 mile an hour area. But with my body weight, that's what we've got. So let's go ahead and put it in uh, all wheel drive and see if that changes the speed any. Ooh, okay. Yep, now we're climbing. So we're cruising about 30, 31 miles an hour with it being an all wheel drive and one battery. I did feel some kind of vibration in the front and I don't know if just the uh, front tire was not seated properly when we added the flat out but uh, it's not enough to be concerning it's just something that's noticeable we'll take it off to the bike lane we'll get it figured out go ahead and kick it back into rear wheel drive so we can conserve a little bit of battery here you know now that i think about it i'm not sure if it reads both batteries like automatically when you when you turn both batteries on for it to get the 40 amps instead you might have to turn the bike off and then turn it on with both batteries on to see the full effect of that. So we'll uh, we'll give that a shot because I wanna see if it's gonna go any faster with uh, the dual battery modes, whether it be rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. All right, let's go ahead and turn the bike off. And I have turned the secondary battery on. We'll turn the bike back on. This will ensure that 40 amps is being read and that way I won't have any question about it. Let's just go ahead and take uh, make sure we get it at least into pedal assist number one. Let's go. It is windy today, so the fact that we were doing those speeds in these high winds, well, that's impressive. With both batteries going at 40 amps, it looks like we're cruising between 25 and 26 miles an hour with just the rear wheel drive. But you go a little bit faster, so I'm thinking if you're just riding it around, just having one battery on just to cruise around with, I mean, you're only getting one mile an hour more if you had both, but you're burning up two batteries at one time. So if you're just going for the long haul, well, one battery, and rear wheel drive will do just fine. All right, let's go ahead and kick it into all wheel drive and see how fast she goes with that setup. With my weight, <laughs> I'm only getting around 29 miles an hour, 29 to 30. I mean, we're not on total flat land. We're going up a hill right now. So I also don't see much different in that. So really where you're gonna get most of your effort out of this bike, if you are around my weight, is whenever you're gonna do some climbing with it and that's where you want it in all wheel drive in both batteries. But besides that, oh, wait a minute, hang on, hang on, we're on some flat land now. Yeah, we're cruising at 31.3, 31 miles an hour. So that's about the fastest you're gonna get, which is not much difference than just having it in all wheel drive using one battery. Oh, I just got off the seat. <laughs> this seat is, it's kind of hard. So when you step off of it, well, you're kind of feeling in the old caboose area for sure. Let me see which one we have. 33% uh, battery power left. Let me go ahead and take a look at Strava, see where we're at. Looks like we're at 13.64 miles, 33% battery power. So let's go do a brake test. To get this bike up as fast as I possibly can, I have both batteries going. It's in all wheel drive. And we're going to see if we can get to about 30 miles an hour before I have to slam on the brakes. Uh, we are right at 40 feet. I think I was at 29 miles an hour. We'll go back a little bit farther on this next one and see if we can uh, get the same results. All right, brake test number two. These guys know what I'm doing, so I'm not actually close to them at all. We're taking a photo of a school. All right, we're at 30 miles an hour. All right. And it looks like we are at 42 feet. This bike stops. You know, 40 and 42 feet for braking, that seems like a lot, but this is a lot of weight. And during that braking process, the bike didn't kick to the left or to the right. These tires gripped as well as they could. Everything felt like it was in control. Um, so I feel pretty good about the braking on this bike. <laughs> Look at this. I stopped, put the kickstand in, the bike fell over. And this is my, uh, well, that's, that's my mirror. That's my brake lever. It's all looking rather ugly. I don't know how effective this mirror is going to be at this point, but we'll, we'll try to do something. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we have this big hill in front of us. 
I just fired up the drone so we get some good shots. Let's see if we're gonna make it. I have it in all wheel drive. I have both batteries going. Let's see how it does. Climb, baby. Oh, yeah. This is steep right here. Oh, it's all mud. Lean forward, make sure. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, these tires. <laughs> we made it. It's a little rough. Uh, that was fun though. Before I went up this, I saw a couple of normal people on normal bikes try to do this. <laughs> it didn't go well for them. Well, that was fun, but this bike is a complete mess now, but you know what, I don't even care, that was fun. If it had different tires on it, it would have made it up easier, but I like the tires that this has on it right now because they are quiet. Like this bike, when it's in rear wheel mode, is just really quiet. The only time you really hear anything is when you put it in the uh, all wheel drive motor, if you just have the front wheel drive going. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and test out the front wheel drive, just, just the front wheel drive on this bike. Go ahead right there. Now we are in front wheel drive mode. Yeah, that front motor is loud. And it seems like with the front motor that you'll go just as fast as you can with the rear motor. So whether you're being pushed or pulled, you're gonna do the same speed. Now, I mean, the bike is doing 25 miles an hour right now, but I believe that's because we have lower battery power. You know, the lower the battery gets, it's not able to maintain the higher speeds, but it doesn't pull or anything like this. Like I reviewed another all wheel drive bike and when I had it in front wheel drive mode, it just wasn't a good experience at all. But right now it doesn't feel any different than having it on the rear wheel drive. Although you can feel that it's pulling you instead of pushing you, which is not ideally a bad thing. But I think that I will probably just keep it in rear wheel mode because it makes the bike quieter. I went ahead and kicked it back into rear mode. We have just hit 20% on the battery and that's where things normally go um, sideways on a bike. And what I mean by that is that normally that's when you start noticing like a loss in power or it starts to pulse or anything like that. So I'll be keeping an eye out to see if we're gonna get any of that here in the next few minutes. And I know they said that this bike would do 150 miles uh, on a single battery charge with both of these batteries, but not the way I've been riding this thing. Definitely not with the weight that I have and uh, the type of terrain. I mean, we're not even doing any pedal assist stuff. So those miles that I'm putting on this bike or the shortage that it's gonna do in distance makes total sense. This seat, uh, I think I would wanna upgrade it. You know, this thing's a little, this thing's a little firm and the, with the seating position and the way that you ride it, it just seems like it could be, I'm not gonna say better. I'm gonna say that if I was to upgrade anything on this bike, that would be the first thing that I would upgrade. We are on flat ground, we're at 10% battery power and we're just cruising at 15 miles an hour. Considering it has that little bit of power and the speed that we're going with the weight that we're dealing with, I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive. I figured we'd be doing about eight miles an hour at this point, 6% and still holding 15 miles an hour. All right, now we're at 0% battery power. I'm gonna call it at this, but we're still doing 14, 15 miles an hour. This is doing excellent. Let's pull over and see what Strava has to say. We'll switch out the batteries and we'll continue on. So far, we have gone 29.28 miles on this battery. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the power off. Let's turn on this other battery. We have been using it for uh, the dual battery, hill climbs and stuff like that. We're at 79%. Oh man, we are gonna be taking this farther than I have ever gone down this road. Since we have a pretty full battery over here, let's go ahead and check out the pedal assist levels. I'm in pedal assist level one. We're just kind of going down a hill right here. I'm trying to make sure my hand stays off the throttle, but it just seems like the cruise control will kick in. I'll give myself a little effort here. Oh, hang on. All right, so here's something. These buttons, this bike for some reason just switched to front wheel drive. I didn't touch nothing, or at least I didn't think I did. Maybe with these gloves, you gotta make sure. And I knew it was in front wheel drive because I heard it start making the noise. So we're in pedal assist level one. Let's see what our normal speed will be. Let's go ahead and kick it up into gear seven. Now it is a cadence sensor, so once you start moving your legs, it is gonna go up to the highest speed in that, you know, in that gear or in that pedal assist level. And right now it looks like 17 miles an hour in pedal assist one. Let's see what two does. 
Pitiless Sliss level two will take you up to 20 miles an hour. What about three? We got a hill coming up, so let's see if it's going to hold on or not. I'm trying to pedal as fast as I can, but it has a very small chain ring on the front. So you're not going to, uh, you know, you're going to be able to ghost pedal this bike, but we all know this bike isn't made for pedaling. And I'm climbing a hill, but at least the pedal assist is making it pretty simple for me to do it. And then we're going to be shooting down a hill, so that's not going to be a good reading either. Man, this seat. You put 30 miles on this seat, and it is rough on your behind. Now I got a long way to go. This bike does take a while to get going, but once you're going, you are moving. So it looks like pedal assist level three will get us up to 23 miles an hour comfortably. Pedal assist level four. I think everything's going to stay around 24 miles an hour at this point from pedal assist level four because you really can't turn it. You just can't move your legs any faster, at least not in this seated position. Number five, we'll see. We'll see if we get any difference. Yeah, you get a difference. About 26, 27 miles an hour and pedal assist level five. We are going back to throttle. We are now going into unknown territory. I have not on any review gone this far down this road because none of the bikes before this one would be able to go this distance. But if you needed a bike to do commuting with, I mean, this, this thing's got the juice. I am watching the battery level. And once we get to about 50%, I'm going to turn around. We're already at 48%. We are turning around. I mean, we've already broken the official distance that I've ever done on a bike, but the way that this thing is dropping, now I'm starting to get concerned. Like, did I just screw myself? Maybe. Wouldn't be the first time that I've screwed myself during a review. We are dropping battery real quick. We're down to 24%. We're at 36.62. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but that is Chicago. So we have a ways to go. And, and we're going to be going at a slower pace, probably about 20 miles an hour to ensure that I make it home. We are at 13% battery power. I'm probably about six miles from home, so I'm feeling pretty confident that I'm gonna make it. Just barely, but I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna make it with this bike. Riding in this position for so long, and this seat, man, if there's an upgrade for this seat, I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna buy it. Right now we're on the 606 trail. This is what we started our review on, and this is the trail that leads to my house. So we're about 3.3 miles from the home. We have, 11% battery power, which gives me all kinds of confidence. I know we're going to make it home. And that is a good feeling from what the feeling I had earlier. Look at this, guys. Zero flashing. I'm here at the garage. I was cruising at 13 miles an hour all the way till I got to this point. This couldn't have turned out any better when it came to distance. So let's do the final thoughts and we'll tell you how far we made it. It is time for my final thoughts. Now, take a look at this bike. You can see that I had an awful lot of fun with it today, riding it around Chicago. I do have to tell you that this bike has gone farther than any of the bikes I have reviewed so far on this channel. This bike went 49.19 miles, and it would have gone farther if I wouldn't have spent so much time in all-wheel drive riding up and down hills. So I think if you're looking for a commuter bike that you can just tool around on, not have to pedal, and know that it'll get you where you want to go, well, this one is going to be a solid choice by far. Plus, the price tag on this bike right now is super cheap, $15.99 as opposed to the $21.99. I don't know how long that's going to last, so go ahead, click that link in the description below. Hurry up and get this bike before the price goes up. And when you do that, that helps my channel because I've been sitting on this bike for an awful long time today, and I really, really wanted to get off this seat once I hit about 25, 30 miles. And this thing would be, this is what I would upgrade. This would be the first thing I would upgrade. <laughs> I don't know anything else that I would also upgrade with this bike, but just this seat. This, this bike really doesn't need anything else, just this seat. I also don't know how to reset the trip mileage 
on this bike. Now, I looked at the manual. I showed you what the manual said, but then when I went ahead to do it, it didn't reset it at all. So I'm not really sure what the way is to reset this display. When this thing is in dual drive mode, I tell you what, it just launches when you take off. It launches up a hill. And then when you have it in either front or rear drive, whoop, rear or front drive, it rides the same, which was something nice and I didn't expect when it came to me testing out front and rear drive. I love the tires. I think they're great. They're super quiet and they make you feel like really secure when you're riding the bike. Out of the moped style bikes that I have reviewed, this one is by far my favorite and I plan on keeping this one for quite a while. I do want to put it up against my Mooncool MC3. We'll kind of have a battle of the all-wheel drive dual battery bikes to see how that kind of works out. So stay tuned for that. So that's it. That's all I have to say about the Milad DX300 Max. And I want to thank you for watching. So until I see you again, enjoy the ride.